And welcome guys to an intense 5v3. Today's replay is a little bit different than usual. We have five Orcs of the Misty Mountains armies hunting uh, three Dwarven armies. Two Erebor, one Khazadum. Now the rules are the Erebor armies need to defend their minor units and defend them to the death. Each army gets 15,335 uh, florins or 46k total throughout the whole team to share. The um, the attackers uh, get 56k. Uh, the rules, other rules are only one black lock engineer unit, no artillery allowed. There is no artillery allowed for the attackers. Um, there is a max of six expos. I'm thinking that means six crossbow units, and they're hunted by wargs trapped in this valley, nowhere to run. Ten thousand enemy units coming their way at least. And on that note, we'll get started with the replay. And today's replay comes from Captain Jervis. And we have these Dwarven Miners here. He's got a couple of units up here defending them. Oh, uh, sorry, two units of Dwarven Miners. Per Erebor army, I think. And we have some Blacklock Engineers and some Dragon Slayers of Arid Mithrin. Down here we have one of the Erebor units for Unknown Soldier, his ally. The other units of Jervis are some Ironfoot Pikes. Looks like looks to be only three units here. And we have some two units of Axe Guard of Erebor, two units of Erebor Legionnaires. And we have three units, possibly, or four units, no, three units, of Ironfoot Warriors, I think, and two units of Ironfoot Axe Throwers, and three units of Ironfoot Crossbows. Alrighty, moving on. We have. Unknown Soldier, as I said before, he has some Erebor Legionnaires. Uh, his miners were deployed a fair distance away from his army. I don't know if that was by accident or not. We have some Ironfoot Crossbows, some Ironfoot Halberds, two units. We have Ironfoot Warriors, two units there. Ironfoot Spears, two more units of Ironfoot Warriors. Two more, sorry, one unit here of Ironfoot Crossbows. Highborns of Erebor, Ironfoot Halberds, and Dragon Slayers of Arid Mithrin. We have the other unit of his Dwarven Miners, and Axe Guard of Erebor. Up here we have some Axe Guard of Erebor again, and Erebor Legionnaires. And that brings us to the final Dwarven player, Euranger, 0123, one, commanding the Khazadum army. We have some 2nd Legion Axe Guard, 4th Legion Shield Guard, uh, all kinds of Khazadum, a pit to be armoured up. More 4th Legion Shield Guard, I think 2 units of Khazadum Reclaimers, uh, I think also 2 units of Sons of the Fallen. Two units of First Legion Pikes, Guards of Khazadum for sure. Um, some Second Legion Axe Guard, I think a couple of units of them. Some Sentries of Khazadum, some Mithril Guard as well. And that's all I can really see in this blob of troops. Can't really make them out. Anyway, we'll just see what this last unit over here is. This is your Rangers Dwarven Miners. Two units. Okay, so each, each, each Dwarven player has two units. It looks like they've got to defend them to the end. And we come to the first of the attackers coming to destroy the dwarves. We have Mr. Sneakman. He's got some heavy golden spears here. I think four units. Looks to be two units of white Eric fearmongers. Heavy goblin halberds. Three units here. One unit spread out for some reason. Some goblin king's bodyguard. Black bear mountain berserkers. A deadly army. Doesn't look like Mr. Sneakman is one of those armies that was allowed to bring crossbows with him. It appears. I can't tell. I don't think so. Alright, moving on, we come to the second attacker, or second army, once I get through it, this mountain. Oh, this is more Stinkman units. We have Goblin Infantry and some Heavy Goblin Crossbows, so one unit there. And the next attacker is Wafflers. We have Heavy Goblin Spears here, I think, I think three units of them. We have some Cave Troll Drummers. I don't think Mr. Stinkman bought any trolls. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. We have some cave trolls as well. We've got some heavy golden infantry, two units, some snow trolls, some white Uruk fearmongers, just the one unit, goblin king's bodyguard, heavy golden halberds, two, three units, heavy golden crossbows, 
two units here. And I think that's it. So maybe it's actually a 3v4. I possibly got that wrong before. Yeah, I think I did. Our next Orcs in the Misty Mountain army is commanded by Monkey Tron 57, who I don't think I've seen before, so if you're new Monkey, welcome. He has some Dreg Broodlings here. We have two units of Heavy Goblin Crossbows. We have some Black Uruks in the Mountains, two units. Goblin King's Bodyguard. Cave Troll Drummers, Snow Trolls. Cave Trolls. White Uruk Fearmongers. And three units of Heavy Goblin Spears. And we also have some Mountain Uruk Hosts here, two units. So one, one unit, one unit, my bad. And we have some Wog Skirmishes, Bogs Champions. So Heavy Goblin Spears. Actually, this is for the final attacker, my bad. Telepyrion. And he has some cave trolls up here. The rest of his army appears to be up here. We have some heavy golden spears, heavy golden halberds, cave trolls, snow trolls, more spears, white Eric fearmongers, some more halberds, I think two units, some black bat mountain berserkers, heavy golden crossbows, cave troll drummers, and that appears to be it. So, without further ado, let's get this battle started. Enjoy! All right, so Jervis is moving towards his allies, up to the up to the ridge, up to the campsites. We got a keep on this side and a little mining town over here. Looks like there's uh, only one way up here, actually. Yeah, one path. Actually, two paths. They can go in them two ways. Looks like unknown souls will try to hold this path here. That protects these two paths up to either side. Uh, Uranger has one entry point up here, and that appears to be over here. Actually, it doesn't. How the hell do you get up here? I think maybe you can go up through here. That could be one way. We'll have to wait and see what the attackers do. But we actually have we have some snow trolls chasing the dwarven miners. This is not good for unknown soldier. I think the um, dwarven armies need to protect their miners. Or maybe maybe they had to um, initiate a truce of some sort to allow the defenders to get themselves set up. Although, <laughs> had the attackers been allowed to start attacking, they could have done some serious damage here. Walk skirmishes from Telperion moving in. What will he do? Will he start firing? Yep. They're firing he's at the iron for crossbows. Jairus could be getting pretty upset here. If he's not supposed to be attacking. Okay, crossbows loading up. They want some revenge. I tell you. Jarvis better be careful here. We got Bulge Champions coming around there. The Bulge Champions are starting to go down. Ah, uh, that's why the accuracy wasn't that great. We had two units in here. The skirmish is out of ammunition. I think they're out. Oh, this is going to be bad. Actually, it's not too bad for him. He only lost a few wargs. Jarvis lost quite a few crossbows there, actually. Alright, so we have Wafflers moving up surprisingly quickly. And we also have Mr. Sneakman coming in from the right. Damn, that looks cool. Let's just tilt the camera up. What an awesome valley. It's too bad they're being trapped and uh, four armies coming to kill them. Other than that, the site is almost breathtaking. It's a nice map. Perhaps Jervis could put it in the description below, in the comments below, sorry, what the name of this map is. 
Because this is this seems to be like a nice siege map. I can understand why have why um, they wouldn't want attackers to bring artillery. There's only so many space. So many, sorry, there's only so much empty space here for the defenders to put their troops in. If they're being pelted by artillery, <laughs> odds are they're gonna lose a lot of men. But you know, we'll see how this goes. We'll actually do a small cut here and come back shortly once the attackers are all in position and begin their assault. Alright guys, looks like we have some movement here. Mr. Seatman's moving up, we have some snuggers, skirmishers out front leading the way. Goblin infantry charging in. Also Wafflers are sending up some troops, we have heavy gun spears inbound. More snuggers, skirmishers appearing. Looks like he's going to try and go for the centre, he's going to try and attack unknown soldier. A bit of a gamble here because his allies aren't taking on the other airborne armies on the side. Looks like these are the only two paths up. If they can take out unknown soldier then they have four paths instead of two which would definitely help them out. All kinds of cousins of them getting into position. We got okay they're being fired on right now by the heavy by the goblin crossbows. Sorry. There's a wolf and crossbows, my bad. Crossbows lighting up. It says they're firing. Here we go. It's a storm of javelins. This is definitely a smart move here. We've got all kinds of kinds of them. Look, looks like they're trying to pepper the snugger skirmishes. This is a great opening move here from the attackers. I think we got more stuff. I guess skirmishes over here. Okay, all kinds of targeting this unit of Snaga. I think the um, airborne armies and Kazadum are scrambling really to get their crossbows and archers into position. Now, this dwarven defensive line took a lot of damage here in this opening salvo, and we have more troops coming in, mostly light troops. Okay, this unit of Snaga broke. Alright, Waffle is keen to keep his Snaga alive. Oh, yeah, Snaga 151 broke, but they'll come back. We've got heavy golden crossbows here, and they're reloading. Okay, we've got the Orc Hunters firing into the heavy golden crossbows right now. Okay, unknown soldier trying to recall and rebuild his defensive line. Yeah, they went out too far. We got skirmishes, we got wargs moving in. Too bad it's not the Bulk's champions. Could have done some real damage to that unit. I don't think these guys will do that well. Building spears, the guards. Okay, man, the coast is already going in. Jerry said his mine is out front for some reason, but he's recalling them. And we got crossbows, one crossbow unit here. 
And his other two crossbow units looks like he's just trying to reposition. And they're not going up they're not going up your your Ranger's side just yet. The Snaga's moving up for another few volleys. Monkey Tron moving in with his men. Jeros' line's holding strong. We got Axro is really destroying this unit on Mount Nero Coast, so we're already shaken. We'll head back down to the center, see how things are going. Snaga still have the, the javelins out, but Iron Soldier sent a unit of Ironfoot Spears. That's smart, they can handle cavalry as well. Okay, the Goblin Infantry here and Heavy Goblin Infantry are trying to keep these guys busy while Mr. Sneakman moves some Snaga around the sides here to just pelt this unit and just take out this unit. I'm for crossbows from Unknown Soldier is here. We've got Heavy Goblin crossbows over there. I think these crossbow units are firing into them. So we have all hunters firing into them as well. Okay, we've got cave trolls moving up. These walk skirmishes, where are they going? I'm just searching for a target, probably. Dwarven miners here. I thought they were supposed to be saving them. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just need to make sure that at least one of the units are, is are alive at the end. It's like a, it's like a second chance thing. If they lose one unit, it doesn't matter. If they lose two units, it does. Okay, we are for crossbows there from Jervis targeting the cave trolls. That wasn't that smart. Walk skirmishes moving in. Took out a few of the dwarven miners there. Alright, so Monkey Tron still pressing actually. He's pressing pretty, pretty strong. The crossbows seem like they're in position. Black Hawk Engineers are also ready to really start going at it, but they haven't started firing yet. No one has. What to do here? What to do? Monkey Tron's obviously one of the first time he used to go in. It's his job to try and do as much damage as damage as he can. This Axe Row units obviously out of the munition, they're being sent up to the fight. We have Axe Guard Airball also moving in to support the center which is under a lot of pressure because we've got the K-Trolls moving in. Mount Nero Coast I think maybe broke before but is coming back to the fight. Cave Troll Drummers are here to make sure no one breaks prematurely. Cave trolls are broken through and are going after the Alpha Crossbows. Airball these guys moving to try and deal with them. What do we have over here coming in now? More Alpha Crossbows. Black Eryx of the Mountains coming in. Jervis sending in his General's unit. The Dragon Slayers. Catrol's finally going down. That'd be a big relief there to Jervis. He's bringing up his um, Blacklock Engineers. Wow. The Dwarven Miners just took out one of the Generals of the Attackers. 
It was, was it Mr. Snake Man or was it Wolfless? Looks like it was Mr. Snake Man. He put his general in the Goblin Infantry unit. I wonder if we saw him do that before, I don't know. Might be another player. Okay, looks like we've got crossbow fire coming in. What is the Iron for Crossbows doing? It says they're reloading, it says they're firing. Where are they firing at? Alright, they're targeting the cave trolls. I would have thought the bigger threat to the, uh, his army would have been the Snaga skirmishes. Once again, unknown soldier charging forward, trying to catch the Snaga skirmishes, trying to break them, send them off the field. Okay, Monkey Tron really setting up all his units here. Black Lock Engineer is firing in. I think he's in a horrible position. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of blood. Unit of Vineful Warriors moving up. Snaga skirmishes are here. We got Black Bear Mount Berserkers, Berserkers here from Teleprom. Telperion, sorry. Telperion. Only half the enemy force remains. It is twenty six to twenty eight. I don't know if you've you seen those crossbows as out of ammunition or not, but they're in the fight. Half a crossbow for unknown soldier here firing in on Monkey Tron's left flank. Unknown soldier setting up four units here to try and tackle all these Snaga skirmishes. The goblins retreating. Drawing Unknown Soldier out more and more. If this is a trap, then it won't be very good for Unknown Soldier if he keeps playing along. We've got some heavy golden spears here. Your Ranger, I don't know what it, where his attention is, but it ain't here. Okay, he's pulling back now. Set up his 4th Legion Shield Guard. You can send the Shield Guard in and, in and in tight formation because there's no crossbows nearby. They're over here, but I think they're out of range right now. I know Souls are retreating, Snaga moving back in again. Okay, it looks like we've got a general here. Does he belong to? He's Monkey Tron Sumo. The Drake Broodling's still battling away. Dragon Slayer's down 69. Don't know where the Blacklocks are. I'm seeing a few bodies. The 
The Drake Burns might have taken out the Blackhawk engineers, uncer uncertain at this stage. Given how qu quickly they were dispatching the Eiffel crossbows, I think it's entirely possible. Oh no, they're still alive. They're over here. I didn't see them before. Down to five. Wow. Jervis was lucky enough to lose all that unit there. Five is still deadly. So we have cave trolls coming to finish them off. Stink man and wafflers attacking the other side as well. Kelpirin and Monkey Tron attacking this side and it looks like all players are sending one or two units up the middle. These dwarven crossbows should probably be firing in the center, you'd think. So they have their crossbows out. They're reloading. Nice hit. Dragon Slayers are here, crossbows are here. We got all to the, we got snow trolls moving in from behind. Goblin King's bodyguard for Wafflers is here. Where is the other Blacklock engineer unit? And why aren't the why aren't the custom reclaimers firing into the blob below? Surely they would get them a lot of kills. Okay, these guys are firing into the white Uruk Fearmongers on the side. Back by Mountain Berserkers, white Uruk Fearmongers, and heavy weapon crossbows heading towards the center. Jervis in danger of losing his general here. Okay, backlock engineers. Jervis's unit at least is moving around. Going for crossbows there. And we've got snow trolls moving up. Jeez, probably not the best time to move your Blackhawk engineers up. They're going to be caught out. Okay, Jervis just took you, I think, either Tell Pyridion or, or Monkey Trons General. Jervis in danger of losing his Blackhawk engineers. 54 now to 52. He's being outflanked. I know Solzia fell back but didn't send units to hold each pass. You now Jervis is in all sorts here. A 
big gun spears here. They have to be outflanked. There is no other unit up here. Only half the enemy force remains. Fifty eight and fifty three. Now, Jebus is in all sorts right here. Don't know where Jebus is running to, he has nowhere to go. So the defenders mostly gave up this part. Crossbow's moving up Walk with all hunters. I know Soldier here has a lot of troops. Most of your Rangers men is here are here as well. I'm not seeing the Blackhawk engineers. Who knows, we might still see them later, I don't know. Goblin King's bodyguard from Mr. Sneakman under attack from the Orc Hunters. One dead Blackhawk engineer unit there. Airborne Legion is down 24, fighting as best they can. Okay, there goes Jervis's general. The Dragon Slayers are getting pushed to the cliff's edge. One person here, tell Pyrion, just encircling Jervis right now, trying to finish off what's left of his men on this side. And that is it. Alright, so... Well, you thought that was the hard part, but um, the attackers got through that with relative ease. And there are two ways up to the to the Dwarven Keep, or the Dwarven Castle. But Jervis's Dwarven Miners here, so Jervis did save his Miners. Alrighty guys, what are the Orc Hunters going to do? They're firing at the Heavy Goblin Crossbows. I suppose it makes sense, they're all bunched up, but there's also a heavy golden crossbow unit towards them, and they're loading up right now as we speak to fire at the 4th Legion Shield Guard, I believe. Oh, that fire is valuable. Alright guys, I suppose they're winding up. Who's their target? Targeting the heavy goblin crossbows on the bank here. Looks like we got two units here. Clumped up. We should defenders will be loving this. Oh they stop firing. Let's do a quick count of the remaining attackers. It is 50, 
You know, the, the troops blend in well with the ground, so it's kind of hard to spot them, but now you can see everyone moving up now. Walfo still has some men. Telperion Tell still has some troops here, not too many, but a little bit. And Monkey Tron could be gone. Yeah, I think his army was destroyed, but you know he did take he did help, he did take down Jervis's position. So you know. him and Telperion certainly played their part. Heavy golden crossbows firing. They're firing into these. It's like, hey, they're trying to take down unknown soldiers' crossbows. They're returning fire or what? No, they're not. So, okay, he's he's almost lost twenty. He's lost twenty-one soldiers. They're returning fire now. Waffler still has the majority, just. Oh, those crossbows are getting a few secondary hits here. Here we go, the crossbows. Looks like they're targeting the shield guard and the crossbows here. And the soldier getting them out of there. 64 to 59. Still pretty close. It's anyone's game. Wait. Oh, that's not good. Wolfers is wasting ammunition. Your range of maneuvering is all hunters. He's got two units here. Both were still both still have ammunition. All right, guys, we're back. Wolfers has just been peppering the defenders for the last little bit. We have more troops moving up behind them. And it looks like Mr. Sneakman has sent down some troops into the small valley here. Or a small courtyard. Big ass courtyard. Uranus is sending down some Dwarven miners. With no support. I'm wondering how long they're going to last here against the Heavy Goblin Spears. But uh, Mr. Sneakman is making a slight error here. He's really bunching up his troops. Goblin King's bodyguard as well. Right, so he's getting down there and he's spreading out his troops as fast as he can. Looks like the crossbows are targeting the Goblin King's bodyguard. Probably a good idea. These heavy Goblin crossbows, who are they targeting? Oh, they're trying to target these guys. The angle's horrible, he should stop. Okay, we've got one all kinds of unit firing in. Two stone trolls there. The other mine is broken, but fighting to the death. Nice. Oh, Monkey Tron is still alive. He's got a he's got a crossbow unit here, so all four all four attackers are still in play right now. Sixty eight to sixty one in favor of the attackers. What's going on now? Heavy Golden Spears unit at ninety five broken. Cave trolls from Monkey Tron should probably move down. Oh, they've pushed the defenders back. We've got a lot of crossbow fire coming in. Attacking the defensive line. Now, your range has got to be careful here. It could be in range of the crossbows. Let's have a look. 
Reclaimers, I'm not firing. We've got one axe throw yet from Jervis here firing. Oh, so Jervis is still in play as well. We saw, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought Jervis might have been gone there, but because of the reclaimers also firing in, taking out the Goblin King's bodyguard, definitely a good idea. Ah, Snaga Skirmishes are still present. Snaga Skirmishes have played a, a vital role in this battle. They really weakened Unknown Soldier's defensive line in the center and really helped the attackers puncture through and come up, and come up either side and outflank the defenders. Jervis's arm was certainly destroyed by that. Looks like he got some troops out though. In time. I think the goblin got the axe throwers here from Jervis here. They're going after the Snugger Skirmishes here. We've got them crossbows are down there. I thought axe throwers could be targeting the cave trolls, I'm not sure why they're not. Alright. Crossbows here out of ammunition, that's not a good thing. These crossbows still have ammunition. All kinds of standing guard on the bridge, ready to start firing the moment the attackers start coming across. It looks like they could be thinking about it. Although it looks like Teleperion's is bringing up some heavy goblin crossbows. Probably start firing in and just sort of weaken the defense over here before they charge in. See, the attackers are trying to do their best to weaken the defensive line before they really commit their forces. The strategy is only good as long as they still have ammunition. And they seem to be using their ammunition well throughout the battle. Because they still have troops with plenty of ammo to spare. I mean, they're still firing in after all this time. 37,000 frames and a few units still look like, they have, look like they have a bit of ammunition. Now, what I don't know why Teleprion is doing this is, well, Monkey Tron is um, sending his cave trolls right into the thick of the battle. I mean, their presence is here, it's vital to boost the morale of the troops, not to really engage in combat themselves. Once they're gone, without a general nearby, these troops will suffer and probably break almost instantly. Now, the Axeros here are trying to, yeah, trying to fire in the goblins down here. Let's see if they're successful. Yep, here they are. The seamen getting out of there. Oh, they broke. But they'll be back. We got the cave troll commander, I think. They just got smashed. Okay, fourth and shield guys pressed forward, trying to take you out the snug skirmishes. Heavy Golden Crossbows firing in, trying to kill these troops. It is 74 to 63, still heavily in favor of the attackers. It looks like we've got Heavy Golden Crossbows out of ammunition. Which begs the question, why aren't, they, why aren't the defenders setting up any forces here? Their archers are exposed. Looks like soldiers doing it, but it's going to be a little bit too late. Oh no, Nicker time. Might be time for the Orc Hunters to start firing again, weaken up these reinforcements. Or fire into the Heavy Golden Crossbows. I'm, I'm sure the Orc Hunters have the range to get there. Oh, the Axeros, are they out? Yeah, I think they're out. That's a bugger. Cousin and reclaimers nearby. But it looks like they've used their axes as well. I 
I wonder what their plan is. So we've got some Goblin crossbows being sent up. These shield guard here are broken. Black Bear Mountain Berserkers from Telepyrion. His general is still alive, it seems. White Eric Fearmongers, full unit. These guys will, should probably come back. I'd be surprised if they didn't. There's no units in that building that I can see. 75 to 65. What kind of are getting off the hill? Where are the crossbows shooting? Really? Goblin King's bodyguard from Morphles is here. They're being peppered by the crossbows here from Unknown Soldier. Only, Only 7,000 frames left. Goblin King's bodyguard's clearly tough. We've got Black Bear Mountain Berserkers. Oh, look, the defenders, the attackers can come this way. They come up right on the side of the hill here. That's good to know for future battles, guys. Yep, they can. That was a path, I was right. But what I was right, or what I was wrong about, is I thought they could go through here. They can't. But they can come up here. the Orc Hunters doing? Okay, your range are not committing any troops there. Oh, a nice fire there from the crossbows. The defenders have got to get their troops out of there. Fodaxar is also in peril. Got some good fight there coming from Monkey Tron. And now the attackers are coming out this side again. With a bit of force too. Their left flank here is pretty weak. The highborns might need to be called. Oh, their fire is, is really needed here. Let's just slow it down a little bit. We're throwing into the Mountain Orc Berserker unit. They probably need to pick a better target. Sure, they can go for the Black Uruks or the Black Bear Mountain Berserkers. Even the White Eric Fearmongers, so that way most of this unit could be firing. The Cousin Reclaimers heading over there as well. This unit down to 64. The First Asian Pike, Sons of the Fallen, two very tough units to try and get through. But we've got Black Bay Mountain Berserkers here as well as White Eric Fearmongers, another great combination. Yep, words out between the attacking team. They're sending over reinforcements. So well done to Wafflers for um, taking that initiative. They're trying to fight that. There's no angle there.
because the clan is firing in. It's just a sea of orcs and goblins is coming up. Well, it's a sea of goblins actually, my bad. No, it's orcs. A sea of orcs and goblins. A unit of 204 broke. I think Sigma, Sigma must have lost his general. They're breaking down easily. We've got a mass chain around here. Eighty-four to seventy-three. All right, the defenders throwing most of the weight behind this last-ditch attempt to keep the enemy at bay. It looks like it's going to work. They broke them, everyone's broken. This is really weird. You're seeing a huge army just break and run away. It's 85 to 76. So we've got Dragon Slayers of Ered Mithrin on the bridge now. Airborne Legionnaires, Sons of the Fallen, First Legion Pikes all trying to hold this side. All trying to hold the bank. Looks like it's working. Snuggle skirmishes. Looks like they don't have the angle. None of them are really firing. Two hundred and two unit broken. Looks so like we've got a defender Sally out here. They're targeting Mr. Sigman's best units here. Don't know how much longer the, the orcs in these mountains can last. Half of crossbows firing in. Red bars in favour of the defenders. Still 87 to 79. Okay, Mr. Sam's got some crossbows here firing in. High ones of the airball looking to shore up the left flank, which is a little bit exposed here. The Wolven Miner is under attack. So like Kazadoom Reclaimers are out of ammunition, they should get them into, into the fight. Wolfless is one cave troll drum left. I hear a few mongers were broken before, but it looks like they've reformed. Defenders pushing out. 
the reclaimers could just move their way in and attack the goblins from the rear. Alright, there goes the general. With the general gone, Telperion's forces should actually... We should see a mass chain around here momentarily. So that the whole army of troops that broke before is all coming back. My name's the Sneakman's men. Well, it looks like we got dwarves. Are the dwarves coming down? No, no. They've moved back up here. Okay. So these dwarves are just from the bridge battle earlier. Oh, there's Waffles as general. Goblins, to their credit, are trying to push forward. But the doors are cutting them down as fast as they're moving forward. Now the defenders are moving outwards again. So they're going to take the whole keep. They're, re they're retaking ground now at this point that they gave up earlier. I wonder what Wolfers is planning to do with his generals unit. I think it's a foregone conclusion that the defendants have won here today. So we will times two speed it to the end, I think. Okay, so Waffles' general there just broke on him. Yep, there goes Waffles' general. There go the defenders, they're chasing the goblins down to their deaths. So congratulations to Captain Jervis, Unknown Soldier and Uranger on the victory, they certainly turned that around. And it looks like all players were there at the end. All players had some units still alive, which was uh, good to see. Okay, Captain Jervis got 3,200 kills, Unknown Soldier 3,104 kills, Uranger 2,204. Looking at the attackers, who also did very well, Mr. Sneakman 1,017, Wafflers did an impressive 1,608, Monkey Tron also did very well, 1,587. And Telperion also did 12.62. Now it was a hard ask there for the tankers to try and assault that citadel. They only had, well, they had three ways they could come. They didn't realize they could go the third way until later on into the battle. But they were probing the enemy. They, they did do it well. The only problem was, I think, um, the cave troll drummers were sent into battle when they shouldn't have been. They should have just been kept close by to keep the morale up of the troops so they could stay in the fight longer and try and take down more dwarves. Um... Coblin crossbows, again, were used pretty well. They should have tried to mass crossbow and just target the defenders when they sort of massed all the dwarves to try and push the attack back, the attackers back, which they did succeed in the end. But there wasn't any, there wasn't enough crossbowmen around to try and pelt them and drive them back, to try and take them down, like they were doing pretty consistently throughout the battle. Um, but yeah, it was a great attack, and you know, credit to Monkeytron and Telperion for taking down Jervis as quickly as they did, and also to Wafflers and Stickman for um, going down the middle and um, capturing the center, which allowed them to outflank Jervis and pretty much take down his army pretty quickly once they did that. So, looking at the kill count, Dragon Slayer's got 271, Erebor Legionnaires 181, 190, very good. Axe Guard of Erebor 152 and 283. I'm for Pikes, range from 71 to 206. I'm for Warriors, range from 40 to 124. I'm for Axe-Rolls, almost got 200 kills apiece. I'm for Crossbows, uh, got three, sorry, got 321. 188 and 324. Blackhawk Engineers, only 119. 
So Backlock Engineers didn't get too many kills since it is a surprise. The crossbow is fared far better. Unknown Soldier, Highborns are Airball, 195, Dragon Slayers, 256, Iron Foot Crossbows, range from 209, 207, and 157, very good. Airball Legionnaires, each got over 100, Iron Foot Warriors, 170, 240, and 330, very good work there. Um, Unknown Soldier was fighting a lot of um, Goblin Infantry and low tier units earlier on, so that would be a good reason why those units got so, such, got such high kills. Iron Foot Halberds didn't do too well, 32 and 87, they got taken down by the Snuggle Skirmishers I believe. Iron Foot Spears, what, 361? It looks like um, Iron Foot Soldier didn't have any Blacklock Engineers, I thought he did. That's my bad, I thought I saw them before but I guess I was wrong. Only Jervis had Blacklock Engineers. But um, Dwarven Niners didn't all die, they were still there at the end so they won. And congratulations to Jebus and his team. It was a great defense, and they certainly turned things around when it looked pretty dire there from at the end. The attackers also did very well, had the defenders on the back foot. It was an entertaining battle, so well done to all. Thank you to Jebus. Thank you to Captain Jebus for sending in the replay. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye.